flying over the Sahara Desert, one of the hottest, driest and deadliest places on the planet. Three and a half million square miles of cooker, the size of the US. I'm going to help you survive the desert and your GCSE. Sahara Desert is enormous, a quarter of the African continent sprawling across 11 countries. This place will cook you and kill you if you don't know what you're doing. This has got to be the hottest desert I have never been in. Temperatures are already up to 45 degrees and this is trying to cook you alive. But deserts don't just occur by accident. Let's have a look at why deserts are found where they are. In order to do that, we first have to go back to the equator, to the equatorial climate. There's the equator line. What happens here is that you receive most of the sun's rays, most of the sun's energy, and this causes the ground to heat up, which in turn heats the air, and that air rises. Air rises, air cools, condensation, precipitation. What happens next is that that air, as it hits the top of the atmosphere, is squeezed together and it's forced to move northwards and southwards. As it moves north and south, it gets cooler. As it gets cooler, it gets denser. And as we know from density, the denser it is, the more likely it is to fall. And so it falls. And it just happens to fall between 20 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Falling air warms. It evaporates and that's why these desert areas get cloudless skies and that's why it's really hot during the day but at night that sun's energy escapes really easily and it gets cold, it gets below zero. But that's not the only reason we find deserts where we do. Often desert areas are huge land masses and the air will blow across these land masses. No moisture to pick up and therefore no rain and that's why they're so incredibly dry. The two things that will get you out here is heat exhaustion and sunstroke. So this is an old Berber technique that might just save your life. You need to get your headscarf wet. Once the sun goes down, temperatures drop below freezing, so having the skills to light a fire can help you survive the night. Come on. Come on. Yes, gotcha. You're going to edit this right, so I look really good. I can know what I'm doing. Yeah, of course. That's all right then. This little fella is a scarab beetle. He's actually a dung beetle, and surprisingly, there are actually five things a beetle does with a piece of poo. One, they eat it. Dung beetles get their protein from poo. Two, 
They roll it and lay their eggs in it. They actually use the moon to keep a straight track and keep it away from predators. Three, a dung ball makes a pretty good pack lunch for the larva. Four, they woo girlfriends with their impressive balls. I'll just leave that one there. And finally, five, they chill out on them like deck chairs, a little respite from the blazing sun. So the scarab beetle might seem a little unsavoury, but it does perform an important function in the desert because it breaks down all the organic matter produced by the animals. Quite clever, really. Behind me are the ultimate desert survival specialists. They can store water, not in the humps, but in a special stomach called the rumen. They've got these really long eyelashes too, that allows them to close them off in a sandstorm. And finally, they've got these really leathery tongues that allows them to eat those thorny plants that you find out here. If you want to see good plant adaptations, nothing does it better than this. This is the date palm. And they store water uh, in a similar way to a cactus. I'd show you a cactus, but of course they don't live in the Sahara. They live in the Western Desert, and I'm in the Sahara Desert, so I can't show you. <laughs>